Hello everyone and welcome to another Factorio Friday Facts, number 421, Optimizations 2.0, uh, written by our sitting boss kid and Kofrex. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me. And we're going to hop right into this. So we go over several different categories of optimizations the devs have done. And uh, I'm going to do a fair bit of summarization here. This is uh, fairly long, uh, but I do want to get the general idea across of what each thing is being optimized and some ways they went about that. So first off is row ports optimization by RC. Uh, so he says, I profiled many save files over the years of working on Factorio and frequently see saves where uh, logistics or and or construction robots are taking a lot of update time. That's nothing new, but along with robots come row ports in huge numbers, right? So row ports have been uh, slow, but they always, but they're always present and people are encouraged to build a lot of them even more in the upcoming space age. Uh, where you want to do a lot remotely, right? Because we have all these new remote tools and everything like that. So uh, he says, after the most recent playtesting session, the results save, the resulting save once again showed them taking some small but non-zero amount of time, and it got me thinking about them again, right? So uh, we continue down here. Uh, it would be really nice if they didn't need to be active and updated all the time. Most reports don't have uh, anything to do except consume power every so often uh, relative to the lifetime they will have some robots or robots come along and need to charge uh, there so uh, most don't really do anything except exist as an extension of the logistics networks so I try and experiment what if I just turn them off when they don't need to do anything if a ro robot comes along and wants to charge uh, one of the other or one of the other rare situations where I need to do things I just turn them back on until it's over there were, of course, more compl complexities to it than just that, but the result in work, the time spent on row ports in our recent playtesting save file dropped from an average of one millisecond to 0 0.0 to five milliseconds per tick, which is pretty huge. That's actually quite significant. So, you know, for anyone out there who has tons of row ports, you know, maybe, maybe like a really big base or even a mega base, it's just like all one uh, robo network with tons of robo ports now. I know this isn't. Uh, necessarily specifying this is an optimization for large robo networks just the amount of robo ports kind of but generally oh man excuse me huge yawn um generally uh the more robo ports you have the worse it's going to be uh, but this makes that not quite as bad right i uh, now we move down to radar logic optimization again by our seating so Earlier this month, a minor feature card appeared on the do list to add a small radar coverage area to robo ports normally that would be about five minutes of work to implement, but the card has a small stipulation attached to in a way where overlapping areas don't increase performance costs, right? <laughs> so that's a nice little uh, caveat to add on there. Uh, basically, how this was implemented, you can see debug showing uh, the keep revealed counter here, and then looping through bug is a keep the chunk uh, charted, 50% speed. And basically, the summary of this thing is that. Um, a new registration system radar coverage was implemented to handle overlapping areas without increasing performance costs. The system uses a counter uh, for map chunks to keep them revealed, optimizing update processes. This change reduced the performance impact of radar entities and improved oral game performance by 3.6%, which is pretty decent, right? Now we move on to lamps always on. So during the recent LAN party in the office, um, when we were eating at a restaurant, uh, Kovrick shared an idea that given it is possible to pick, wait, Kovrick shared an idea that given it is possible to pick any RGB color for lamps, he wants to place an image using lamps. Only problem was in order to power the lamps, we would need to place substations every so often, making the image slightly ugly. At this point, I said, unless you build them on a space platform, knowing that on platforms you do not need electric poles, he seemed to be happy and excited when I uh, remain calm not knowing what will happen the next day. So um, basically this goes into, you know, he made a 100 wide by 150 high blueprint containing lamps that he lamps that he placed on platform with an uh, image converted into RGB because of these lamps. Uh, you can see one of the lamps forced on um, by color behavior. And then, uh, yeah, so this gets pretty performance intensive is, so having a, a 15,000 lamps with control behavior needs to update every tick it was not really an option, right? So they optimized this and they reduced the update time by 1.2 uh, 
uh, milliseconds and made a large scale lamp setup more efficient and particularly useful for uh, decorative purposes without performance penalties. So this one I would say is like the most niche, maybe not as mm, impactful change out of here because I don't think very many of us are actually building massive light displays. So like for me, this is pretty much completely inconsequential because I, well, to be honest, I rarely even use lights at all, but uh, even if I do use lights, like it's just a few here and there in my base. I'm definitely not doing anything like this. So uh, this one I think is like the most kind of like edge case that only a few people would encounter, but you know, it's good to have it in there for sure. Belt reader and multi-threading control behaviors. Okay, so essentially they added a... Um, the ability in 2.0 where you can just like read entire sections of the belt with the circuit network. You can see the belt reader itself was added uh, for similar reasons as the lamp always on to reduce the amount of active control behaviors as every uh, belt piece had to be connected individually to read content uh, as you can see there. So the problem with a belt reader is that it is so easy to use during our play testing we use quite a lot not only on space platforms which was the intended use case but other also in other places. Uh, belt reader user where I was not expecting it. Um, so you can see here. And it's essentially the gist of this is that um, despite its heavy usage, multi-threading, the belt reader and other similar control behaviors like combinators improved performance by 9.5% overall, a synthetic test should uh, showed even more significant gains. So this is some great optimizations for belts. And I think quite a few people do use belt uh, reading capabilities as well. So this is definitely gonna be pretty helpful. Um, now they do have one failed attempt of trying to multi-thread the electric network, where uh, basically just due to like all the disconnected networks and stuff that you can have, it really didn't turn out to be worth it because it uh, actually required, like, like the amount of extra CPU usage and demand it had um, compared to the other benefits it gave, which is not really worth it. Um, so, it did technically work, but the trade-off, the increased CPU usage didn't really justify it. And again, that's just because the complexity of interconnecting the electric networks made this approach ineffective. All right, so you can, one of the cases where electric networks are not independent. And then the results, which I just went over. So just to kind of show this in, in, the, in this example, when the oil refinery is crafting, its energy storage is discharging the electric network needs to charge it back in here we have two possible cases that happen so left electric network updates first charging the oil refinery from steam engine the boiler would burn fuel and inserter would activate right electric network updates first changing the oil refinery charging the oil refinery from the solar panels in which case boiler remains idle so that's a failed attempt so not everything worked obviously but we do have some more so smarter update of worker robots Right, which is pretty great because worker robots are very heavily used. I noticed a problem with logistic robots in our office. Say if someone uh, removed a cable from the automated system, adding more robots uh, to robot ports on Fulgaria, in a few hours we ended up with an overpopulated uh, logistic network with 10k robots having nowhere to go because all the robot ports were full. Since no one noticed this problem for hours, the first reaction was to add an alert for when the worker robots don't have any spaces uh, to station, similar to the alert of no short. Uh, storage space and yeah you can see here but the underlying problem is the worker robot update is too simplistic all robots are iterated every tick and their update logic executed however the update logic is most of the time very very simple things like continue moving toward this target wait in queue to start charging and then uh, Vasquez goes on to say it is not a great not a new idea to fake the smooth movement of something while actually updating only once in a while they use that in the chunk planner in a very old Friday fax and the smoke update in an even older Friday fax nine years ago. I think I actually remember that Friday fax with the smoke update. <laughs> so it's just a question of time until these techniques uh, would be applied to their worker robots. The problem with the worker robots compared to the just smoke uh, is that they do a lot of different things like different types of jobs, stationing, and charging. But since I was motivated to find another way to optimize the game, I sat down and jumped right in. The main part of the challenge was the robots, robots moving as most of the logic worked in a simple way of, are we there yet? No, move closer. Are we there yet? Yes, do the next part of the logic, right? So uh, basically they go on to say that 
they kind of just use the same thing. So debug visualization, red real robot is only updated uh, once every 20 ticks. Ghost robot is predicted position used for rendering. Yeah, so they're kind of um, just faking the smooth movement um, and reducing the update frequency, but the change improves save performance by 10 to 25% depending on the number of robots and help manage large robot populations more efficiently. So this is really great. You know, again, this kind of goes back to the first bullet point I mentioned where if you're someone who just has like tens of thousands of robots and tons of RoboPorts, these changes, this one and then the very first one of the RoboPorts is gonna help you a ton. Overall, I mean, this is just gonna help. I think the RoboPort and this one are probably like the most generally impactful. Uh, just for like the general player base um, so this is really good and we go to the result the overall result of all this where the office land party say the overall save performance was increased by 15 percent and it generally depends on the amount of robots but with some heavy robot saves uh, the overall performance is usually 10 to 25 percent i call this a success with all the changes combined we're getting into more comfortable territory when it comes to performance with bigger space age saves but it would be nice to push it even a little bit more to allow players to go more crazy which obviously i am all for that uh, we have some ideas which could help a lot so stay tuned and hope that these uh would be success stories and not fail post mortem so uh yeah i'm really interested the one thing that kind of the glaring thing to me that i see missing from this is any sort of train performance improvements because right now in the game as you start building really big as you get you know into mega base and you have a bunch of trains and like in the uh, 2.0 sim that Colonel Will and I did, um, and he's done several more after that, like by far the largest performance hog of the game that, that basically dropped uh, dropped the game below 60 EPS was trains. It was like, I don't know the exact amount, but I'm pretty sure it was like close to half or more than half of like the overall game performance. Like everything else combined was like half, and then trains was the other half. And it's like, it... um. It may not have been like actually ha like exactly half, but close, I think. Um, and yeah, like the more trains you get, it just it just gets pretty bad. So I'm really hoping that's something they're able to look into and fix to some degree because you know I imagine you're going to be using trains a lot, especially with elevated rails. Like that's just you know encourages people even more to use them, not only because they're cool, because it makes you be able to build you know more complicated junctions and you know more train throughput and stuff. So if anything, I'm going to say there's going to be more trains in 2.0, and if the train performance is still the way it is now, uh, that's going to be kind of unfortunate. That's that's like definitely, I think, going to be a huge performance bottleneck for a lot of large base builders. Uh, but other than that, these are great. I really look forward to seeing uh, what they have coming up in the future with the other ideas. I mean, if we could get a bunch more performance increases, this is going to be pretty crazy what stuff we're going to be able to build it's going to be really exciting um but that's going to do it for this one everyone i know it was you know maybe more on the technical side kind of on the shorter side but this is really good stuff like these optimization posts i really do always enjoy them because you know i like to build big uh, you know I, I play with other people who like to build big bases and this type of stuff is usually kind of what like usually kind of the barrier like that's usually why the save stops uh, not because we get bored but because you know we hit a performance wall so having performance increases is always always a welcome thing uh, but yeah leave your thoughts below too right like what do you think of these will these uh you know impact you what do you think is missing uh you know do you agree with what i said with trains do you think there's some other glaring uh performance things that should be fixed and in, in such so i would love to hear your thoughts down below and as always if you did enjoy a like is very much appreciated and if you are new and not subscribed already I definitely uh consider doing so to keep up with all future content and until next time i look forward to seeing you all and do take care